West Branch of Big Creek was a very, very unique trout stream. Back in the 70s and, and prior to that, it was an absolutely wonderful little trout tributary. Had an uh, excellent population of brook trout and brown trout. In the late 70s, the beaver uh, population exploded and they moved into the area and started constructing dams. And at the time, we really didn't realize the impact that these dams were going to have on this fishery, but angler uh, reports started to indicate the fishery was declining and getting worse and worse. And it's one of those things you can't draw a causal, and, uh, causal relationship right off the bat. Sometimes things have to crash before you finally realize what was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, in this case, it was beaver. We're taking these dams out for two purposes. One is to allow fish access. And the second thing is to figure out what's going to happen to the sand load in the river and manage the sand load. One of the things that beaver do in order to access their sources of wood is to cut tunnels or trenches or ditches in the low-lying areas so that they can swim to their source, climb out, walk a short distance to the trees, cut them, drag them back down and be able to have a water channel to carry, a, carry the brush back to wherever they need it to go. We went in and trapped and in a matter of uh, probably five or six years we took out I think it was close to 200 beaver. Big Creek is a watershed within the North Branch watershed. The area where we're removing dams now was one of the primary areas for the uh, raising of young brook trout. Not only young brook trout, historically there were some very large brook trout up in this area. It was just about all gravel at that time, a perfect spawning area for brook trout. And much of this water has been cut off by the beaver dams. Uh, yeah, Dam 10 was uh, probably four feet tall, standing uh, in the water about shin deep. Uh, it would probably come up to one's shoulders. That dam was probably a hundred feet wide. Beaver dams not only fragment the stream in warm stream temperatures, but one thing that people really don't consider is the amounts of sediment that they add uh, to a stream channel. You gotta frame it in the sense that if you remember as a child trying to plug up a ditch with, with dirt and a shovel, how it kept washing away, well the same thing happens to the beaver when they construct their dams. Uh, they use a uh, combination of sticks and vegetation and soil and water flowing through soil, the water picks it up and transport it out. So every day the soil that they pack into that dam is washed out. So they go that following night and keep mining the banks and mining the stream bottom and hauling more and more dirt in to plug up the dam and keep their pond level high. It's a day in, day out, 24 seven process. And if you look at it that way, the amounts and the volumes of sediment they add to a stream over a year or two or three can be very, very significant. West Branch Big Creek, I think in the end we tallied in that short segment of headwaters, there were over 19 beaver dams in that segment. So you can imagine over the 20 or 30 years that they were in place here and there, uh, the tons and tons and cubic yards of sand that were added to that channel. After you pop a hole of one of these things, you can look back upstream and you'll actually see the formation of new current flows through and along the old channel. Beavers are very active critters and they do come back, so you may not have to go in every year and knock the beaver population down. You may not have to go in every year and remove beaver dams, but there's a likelihood that that could happen. Once committed, you have to stay committed, continue the work over a period of time. Otherwise, everything that you do will go away.